Welcome and thank you for joining us on Birth Mother Matters in Adoption with Kelly Rourke Scary and me, Ron Rains, where we delve into the issues of adoption from every angle of the adoption triad. Do what's best for your kid and for yourself because if you can't take care of yourself, you're definitely not going to be able to take care of that kid and that's not fair. And I know that my daughter will be well taken care of with them. Don't have an abortion. Give this child a chance. All I could think about was needing to save my son. My name is Kelly Rourke Scary. I am the executive director, president, and co-founder of Building Arizona Families Adoption Agency, the Donna K. Evans Foundation, and creator of the You Before Me campaign. I have a bachelor's degree in family studies and human development and a master's degree in education with an emphasis in school counseling. I was adopted at the age of three days, born to a teen birth mother, raised in a closed adoption and reunited with my birth mother in 2007. I have worked in the adoption field for over 15 years. And I'm Ron Rains. I've worked in radio since 1999. I was the co-host of two successful morning shows in Prescott, Arizona. Now I work for my wife, who's an adoption attorney, and I'm able to combine these two great passions and share them on this podcast. When a birth mother is choosing an adoptive family, this is a big part of a birth mother's adoption journey herself. Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. is a big moment. It does a couple things. It makes her adoption decision real for her because as she's moving forward, this is like a milestone right. in her adoption journey. She's looking at books that contain pictures of real adoptive families mm-hmm. who are being presented to her to potentially parent her unborn baby. Right. And this can create that choice is permanent is when it becomes concrete and when it's Correct. like, wow, this is I've this is made real. a decision, right? This can create a, a myriad of emotions. Sometimes when I'm working with a birth mother and she's choosing an adoptive family, she's looking through profiles and she's crying. Mm-hmm. And new social workers will come to me and say, you know, is that a concern or red flag? And it's not at all, in my opinion. In most cases, I won't say across the board, but a lot of times When you're looking at the face of the woman that is able to parent your child, when you are not, it's very hard to accept and to look into the face of possibly the mother of the baby that you're carrying would stir emotions, I think, in just about anybody. You would start judging yourself and thinking, I'm and not good enough. And it, it's, it's hard. hard to look at yourself like that and of course think it that, is. yeah, so, okay. Sometimes we'll have birth mothers that want to postpone or delay looking at profiles because it really makes everything real. While other birth mothers find peace after they pick a family mm-hmm. because they know the outcome. They know what the end is going to look like. This of their is the family journey. that my baby is going to be a part of. And once they have that peace, they can get to know the adoptive family and they know they're making a beautiful choice mm-hmm. and they get this reassurance And it really helps them emotionally and mentally center themselves Mm -hmm. in their adoption plan. Also, I have seen it make a birth mother rethink what type of adoption she wanted. So if you had a mom that was really hesitant about doing a semi-open or open adoption, and she was kind of leaning towards a closed adoption, after she sees the adoptive families and they don't appear threatening and they don't appear judgmental, Mm -hmm. and they seem really nice and they have a really nice home and family, extended family members, she may think, oh, I would do an open adoption with this right. family. Like this is this is way better than what I was thinking. These are people I'd like to talk to while right. I watch my child progress in life. Correct. Okay. And I think that open adoption in in the majority of cases is definitely a, a better choice all the way around. Mm-hmm. And so I, I love it when that happens. I have seen birth mother choose an adoptive family for the type of adoption preference the the adoptive family wants, mm-hmm. where they live. If they have other children, if they have any pets, if they're going to be a stay-at-home mom or if the child's going to go into daycare, uh, what type of religion they are, their lifestyle, whether they're educated, if they travel a lot, if they have certain hobbies, their reason for adopting. A lot of birth mothers are very interested in learning the reason that adoptive families want to adopt. Right. That is a question we get quite frequently. So is that good to share, for instance, in the book, like, this is why... You know, even if it is due to infertility. And it can just be a simple statement like that. It doesn't have to be a detailed medical diagnosis. It can be that 
biologically the were unable female to. Female isn't, al- isn't you able to. You didn't have to go that detail. You really? Say, but yeah. No. I mean, we're it, just not able. You could just say that biologically right. we're unable to um, conceive and, and carry a child, and adoption is a beautiful choice for us. Okay. When birth mothers first look at adoption profiles, they usually look at all of the covers first. So mm-hmm. we normally present three to five as approximate. We don't like to do more than that because it becomes overwhelming for the birth mother. That makes sense. And some birth mothers will pick up the first book. A lot of times that's the book they choose. Not always, but a lot of times. So if we lay them out, they'll go, they'll look at them and then grab one. And some of them will literally study every word while others just race through them. Right. And, and just skim it, sort of. Yes. Yeah. And again, some cry. Uh, when you have a birth mother and a birth father, and they're both looking at the books together, the birth mothers read and focus on the pictures and are very interested in every design on the page. Mm-hmm. Whereas the birth fathers, oftentimes I see them just kind of glancing over and looking at the pictures. <laughs> and um, they're not as as interested in the books. Right. You know, they're, they're great in person and meeting with them, but in the books... Not they don't seem as interested as the uh, birth mothers for the majority. Right. That's interesting. All the birth mothers love to keep the book because what they do is they study the book and they familiarize themselves with the book and they almost memorize it. And really? it's their way of bonding with the adoptive family before they get to know them. Mm-hmm. So when adoptive families are creating a profile book, I usually tell them um, books are always better than PDFs. So rather than sending us a PDF for us to print out, Go ahead and have the book made. You make it a little more professional looking. It does. It, or, it's, right. it's care that you're putting into it. Yeah. Okay. That, again, makes sense. Yeah. Send us at least three. Choose your very best pictures. If you don't have children, don't fill your book with lots of children because it's very confusing. And if you have nieces and nephews, maybe have a dedicated page that says nieces and nephews because as they're going through the book, if you're holding babies and kids in every picture... They think that you have other children, and they may not stop and read that you don't. You want to make it very clear, like at the heading of the page, okay, these are my ne- nieces and nephews. Right. and yeah. Rather than just putting it in little parentheticals at the bottom. Right. Okay. Keep your books simple, classy, and spend time on your book. When you have a chance to be presented to a birth mother who's looking to choose a family for her unborn baby, you don't want to have spent 10 minutes on Snapfish or mixed books mm-hmm. and just th- own a pay a picture on every page with a couple of words. You really want to take time and make it look pretty because yeah. it it shows. This is your first impression this for is the your birth first mothers. Impression. Right. Make sure you include a picture of your house. Obviously make sure that your house number is not in the picture. <laughs> Good advice, because I wouldn't have thought of that. You want to include a picture of your pets uh, mm-hmm. if you've been on vacation. Uh, a picture of your extended family. So, you know, your grandparent, your parents, your grandparents, anybody mm-hmm. who's involved in your life and who will be a part of this baby's life. Right. It's really good to have a page about each parent. Oftentimes on the front will be a picture of just the husband and wife. Mm-hmm. And then you may want to open the book with a short letter to the birth mother and then close with another short note. And when I say short, I would say maybe a small paragraph. Okay. Or two. Three sentences or so. You don't, and you want to keep two, three sentences per page. You don't want to have so much because it becomes overwhelming. Mm -hmm. The biggest and most important aspect, honestly, are the pictures. This is something that I always tell adoptive families when we go to other states and, and have seminars is when you go through your pictures, I would often recommend getting opinions from family and friends. You know, are these good pictures? What is your opinion on these? Uh, Send them to your adoption agency. Let them tell you. Would you recommend having pictures taken professionally? Yes. Really? Yes. Okay. So have a photography. Yeah, not for all of your pictures, but maybe for like your cover photo and then a couple interwoven into your book. Okay. I know that we can do amazing things with our cell phone cameras, and I'm not disputing that. Right. Go ahead and get some professional pictures done. But again, you also want to see real life. So you do. You want to you see do. the but dog get, running get more in the than yard. One, right. Or... Get more than one opinion on your pictures. Okay. It, I don't, I can't. And maybe not a family member necessarily. Because, Somebody that'll be honest. Yeah. You want a little honesty. You do. Like um, again, you're going to see your pictures through your own lenses, mm-hmm. not through somebody else's. And it's really important to get a perspective. 
there are times where we will review um, books for our adoptive families coming in and, and give suggestions. Okay. Now, generally speaking, how many pages would one of these books be? Um, I would say about eight. Okay. So you don't want a novel. Again, no. two to three sentences per page. Have people Maybe a paragraph your... on the front and on the back. Right. Yeah. I like it. Okay. Yeah. You want it to be simple, yet you don't want to have five p pictures on a page either, maybe two or three with little captions underneath. Mm -hmm. And like if you did a, uh, you know, about if you had a pet page and you had maybe two dogs, maybe have, you know, a picture of each dog and then a picture of the dogs together and right. had their names. And I mean, you want to keep it simple because it's a lot to take in. And when you're looking at all of these right. different books, you want yours to stand out. Mm -hmm. This is Sparky. Sparky loves to chase a ball. And that's about it, right? Right. Per picture. And then, okay. I like yeah. it. You want to keep it very simple, but yet very classy. Okay. And really talk about you. What matters to you? If if you have a favorite sports team, wear the jersey. If mm -hmm. you have a scrapbooking passion, not only will it show in your book. I'm sure. Uh, but, you know, have a page of, of what you like to do, who you mm -hmm. are. This is your time to... I don't want to say sell yourself, but you really want to present open, who you truly are. Yeah. Open your heart, open your front door mm -hmm. and, sh and show what your family is made of. And what, again, what the child's life will be like if you choose this family. I think the most important takeaway from these podcasts regarding adoptive families and when birth mothers are choosing and, mm -hmm. and why people adopt, I think the most important thing is time, effort, energy, and care. Pouring it into yourself, pouring it into your book, pouring it into your passion of adoption, mm -hmm. and really creating and paving a way to walk through your adoption journey. Well, my name's Maria. I'm 34, and I placed my son up for adoption. The reason for my placement was because I wasn't financially stable. I didn't have a home of my own. I was actually homeless, and I think that it was the best thing for my son, which turned out to be an amazing thing to do because I still see him to this day. He has an amazing family that I love so much, that loves me dearly, and I really appreciate them for all that they've done. Then I ended up getting pregnant again with my daughter. I chose a family that had biological kids of their own, um, which was my first placement. And then my second placement was my daughter, which I chose a family that couldn't have any kids. And she is actually doing pretty good herself. And I'm just happy with the decision that I made because I'm still financially not stable, but I know that my kids are fine and well taken care of. And I do get pictures and letters and uh, like every six months. I think that it would be the best thing for you guys to do if that's what you're deciding to do. And Building Arizona Family is a great company to you know, work with because they're awesome. My name is Robin and I placed my daughter almost three years ago. Placing my daughter for adoption was one of the hardest but best decisions I made in my life. I wanted to have her, but I knew it wasn't in my best interest at the time. I'm Native American. Placing our kids for adoption isn't something we do. I chose to place my baby outside of the tribe because I wanted her to have a better life. Like as much as you want to think that we have our little reservations and we're in our own little world, it's a struggle of its own that I don't wish on kids to have to grow up in. I see pictures of her and she is she has everything at her fingertips that I wish I could have given her. And I did give it to her in a way because I gave her to her new family. There's open conversations there still, and I don't feel like I'm missing anything. I don't, like, I feel I'm filled in with them, you know? I see her milestones, and I, I can get a grasp of how she is with people, the way she, they talk about her, you know? And, like, they talk about her like she is this great being and you know she is because that's their gift and it's amazing to see that they accepted their gift so proudly. I'm thankful for building Arizona families. I don't know where I'd be without them. Three years later they're still in my life.
We have a pregnancy crisis hotline available 24-7 by phone or text at 623-695-4112, or you can call our toll-free number 1-800-340-9665. We can make an immediate appointment with you to get you to a safe place, provide food and clothing, and start it on creating an Arizona adoption plan or give you more information. You can check out our blogs on our website at azpregnancyhelp.com. Thank you for joining us on Birth Mother Matters and Adoption, written and produced by Kelly Rourke Scary and edited by me, Ron Rains. If you enjoy this podcast, rate and review us wherever you listen to podcasts. And as always, thanks to Grapes for letting us use their song I Don't Know as our theme song. Join us next time for Birth Mother Matters and Adoption. For Kelly Rourke Scary, I'm Ron Rains, and we'll see you then.